Hello everyone, welcome to A plus BI. This channel is all about complex numbers and in this video we're going to be solving a system of equations with complex numbers. We have a quadratic sum and a cubic sum, one of them is zero, that kind of explains why the solutions are going to be complex, well even if they're real they're co called complex, but let me tell you they're going to be, should I reveal the secret? they're going to be non-real. You know why? Because if the sum of two real numbers, if you square them and add them, the sum of two squares is zero, then if z and w are real numbers, then they all have to be zero. But we know from the second equation that z and w are not zero. Can one of them be zero? Well, no, because if one of them is zero, the other one also has to be zero. So they're both non-zero, and in this case, they happen to be complex, non-real numbers. Okay, usually when people say, hey, complex number, when they say a complex number, they're talking about a non-real number, okay? But complex numbers contain real numbers. I don't know if it's good or bad, but that's just the definition. So, let's go ahead and take a look at uh, two methods. I'll be presenting two, but I want to start this time with the second method. You know why? Because it's kind of more painful, that's why, okay, anyways. I came up with the first method first, but then I wanted to start with the second method today, just for a change. So for my second method, I call two things. Uh, z, I set z equal to a plus bi, because it's the name of this channel, come on, don't forget that. And w equal to c plus di. Obviously, I have to use different things. Now, I'm gonna plug these into my first equation. And that's going to give me something like this. a squared minus b squared plus 2abi by squaring uh, z, I get that. And something similar. And one of the nice things about this problem is once you do something for z, it is very easy to apply it to w because you only all you have to do is, uh, you know, replace a with c and b with d. Make sense? Great. Now let's go ahead and simplify this a little bit. I can kind of put together the real parts and maybe uh, prioritize the positive terms first. Notice that these are all real numbers, A, B, C, D. And then here we can kind of uh, put these two together because they will make up the imaginary part. Make sense? And this is Z squared plus W squared. Great. Now I'm supposed to set this equal to zero which is nice because then both of these are zero, right? How can a complex number be zero? Both the real and imaginary parts have to be zero. In other words, zero can, expressed, uh, can be expressed as zero plus zero i and nothing else. That's the only way to represent it. And that's why the angle door or the argument is undefined for zero, okay? Cool. Now, what can we do from here? right? <laughs> Nothing much. You got two equations and four variables. So let's wait for the second equation. So second equation, if you plug these things in, let me just give you the result because that's going to be a lot of work, but I did it for you. You're going to get something like this. A cubed plus C cubed minus 3AB squared minus 3CD squared. Notice the similarity or the, the parallelism, whatever. And for the imaginary part, you're going to get something like this. This time, they're not both zero because we know this is equal to negative four. But negative four is real, so there should be no imaginary parts that's zero. And the real part is supposed to be negative four, which is what the answer is, right? So this gives us four equations. That means we have a system. And kind of arrange the terms a little bit when we have zeros. I guess we can write them like this. a squared plus c squared is equal to b squared plus d squared. I put the b and d on the right hand side. And then we got a, b plus c, d is equal to zero. And in the second equation, I just divided both sides by two, which is something you don't need, right? So, and then the other expression can probably be expressed like this. I don't know if I should put the minus terms on the other side, maybe I should. Let me go ahead and give it to you in that form. And then you'll get this. And the last, the very last equation should give you b cubed plus d cubed is equal to 3a squared b plus 3c squared d. And because it was equal to zero, we don't have a constant. 
nice, right? This is a nice system. No, this is not nice at all. I mean, unless you really know how to solve it, I, I don't see a quick way of solving it. But one thing that might help is since we know AB plus CD, maybe you can try AC minus BD, square it, add to AB plus CD squared, which is zero, and then you'll get an identity. I, I don't remember, I can't remember what it's called, but there's a famous identity that gives you the product of these two things, which is equal to the sum of two squares. Make sense? I hope you can figure it out, but if not, please let us know in the comment section. I'm pretty sure somebody will answer. And then we have these two equations with the sum of two cubes. If you put it all together, is that going to give us a nice identity? I'm not sure. Again, I, like I said earlier, I'm not sure about how to solve this, but this is in no way a nice system. Anyways, let's go ahead and talk about the first method. Wait a minute. Didn't you do the first method? No, we did the second method first. Remember, for those of you who came in in the middle, we did the second method. You can go ahead and watch it later. So now, let's go ahead and take a look at the First method, I was about to say second. So remember, the, our first equation was the sum of two squares. I can write the sum of two squares as follows using an algebraic identity, right? That's why it's important to know these identities. And second one as well. The second one is the sum of two cubes. And I can kind of write something similar, which is going to be slightly different. We'll have more terms because it's cubic, come on. And this whole thing is equal to negative four. Now, what is so good about the first method, right? Well, if you use substitution, you're going to see the, the simplicity of the approach, okay? And what is that? I'm going to set z plus w equal to s for sum and zw equal to p for product. Make sense? Okay. These are very common practices. And now you're going to get the following system, which is going to look simpler. s squared minus 2p equals 0. And I don't want to say 2p or not 2p because... You know what I'm talking about, hopefully. This is s cubed minus 3ps equals negative 4. Now we got a much nicer system, obviously, thanks to substitution. But what is really good about it is that since the first equation is 0, I can isolate p. And I can write it as s squared divided by 2. And then I can go ahead and plug it in here. Awesome. That gives me a cubic equation. s cubed, but an easy one minus 3p, which is s squared over 2, multiplied by s equals negative 4. And notice that this is going to give you s cubed minus 3s cubed over 2 equals negative 4. Now, at this point, you, you make, make a common denominator or just multiply everything by 2. I find it easier if you multiply by 2. The 2 is going to cancel out, leaving us with something like this. Don't forget to multiply on the right-hand side, which is something that I always forgot when I was in middle or high school, anyways, negative x cubed, s cubed is equal to negative 8, which means s cubed is equal to 2, right? Well, I mean 8. Sorry, I'm ahead of myself. And now from here we get s equals 2. Of course, you might be saying, okay, does s have to be real? No, not necessarily. But from the first equation, I have a feeling that s should be is probably real. But anyway, you can proceed with a different, by the way, 8 has three cube roots in the complex world, and you can go ahead and take another cube root of 8 besides 2 and proceed with the same approach and see what happens. Maybe you'll find more solutions. Now, anyways, s is equal to 2. Now I'm going to use it to find p because p and s are related. If you square s, you get 4 divided by 2. Again, you get another two. So S and P are both two, and using Vieta's formulas, we are allowed to write an equation whose roots are S and P. And that is U squared minus S U plus P equals zero. U represents S and P. I mean, not S and P, of course, Z and W at the same time. And since this is two and that's two, we get U squared minus two U, if it's your birthday, happy birthday to you. And then you can kind of solve it using the quadratic formula. You're going to get 1 plus minus i or whatever method you like. And this means that the solutions are z sub 1 is 1 plus i and z sub 2, the second. Uh-oh, I didn't mean that, but you get the idea. If z sub 1 is this, w sub 1 is 1 minus i and vice versa. In other words, by finding z and w at the same time, they're kind of switched around. Make sense? And... 
this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.